Hi yogis, Larissa here at the Funky Buddha. We're gonna talk about some fundamentals of your practice and specifically today we're gonna to talk about some hip poses. We're gonna talk about a couple of different kinds of pigeons and we're also gonna talk about lizards and dragons. All the animals is what we're talking about today. Um, but the hip poses in particular, there are a million reasons why your body is gonna look different than anybody else's body in this pose. I'm gonna give you the most basic structure of what this pose looks like. For me, both of my hips are different, so even on either side, I have to make a different kind of adjustment. So I'm gonna give you a couple of options of how to use your blocks and just the basic structure of what the pose could look like. This is basically your starting point, and then there's a million places to go from there. So in a half pigeon, typically we start from downward facing dog, and you can lift a leg, step it through, and what you're working on is you're gonna start to place your shin parallel to the front of your mat. It may or may not go there. You might find that you're starting from way back here, totally fine. Eventually, you're working on towards parallel. So from here, you can actually stay upright. You can come down to your forearms. And then now that I'm down to my forearms, I'm actually gonna scooch my back leg back more. And this is my pigeon pose on this side. So a couple of different options. You can place your block underneath your back thigh, especially if your back knee feels a little bit uncomfortable. Once you're here, you're working towards hips parallel. You can see that one of my hips is not parallel, but I'm working on my right hip pulling down so the backs of your hips are working towards parallel. So again, parallel shin, parallel hips, that's where you're working towards. I'm gonna switch sides to show you a different variation of the block. Step back to downward facing dog. I'm gonna lift my other leg up, step it through, and I'm gonna shimmy my shin towards that parallel position. And then here, you can see as I come down, there's some space between my hip and the floor. It's not a bad thing, but it's more comfortable if you place a block underneath your hip. So now you've got something to rest on so that all those muscles in your hip can actually relax rather than hanging on to try to hold you in space. So this is another variation of where your block could go. Shin still working towards parallel, hips still working towards parallel. So that's your pigeon pose, that's a half pigeon. And then we also have something called a double pigeon. So what double pigeon is, is we're still looking at your bottom shin parallel to the front of your mat. Your top shin is now gonna come on top of your bottom shin. Ankle over knee on the back of your thigh here. So you'll see for me that my knee is quite lifted. This is not super comfortable for me. I'm not really able to move forward, which is one way that you can go deeper into the pose. Grab your walk, place it in front of your bottom shin, place your foot on top of the block instead. Now I've got a little bit more mobility that I can actually lean my torso forward. And again, you wanna lean from your strong belly rather than trying to lean from shoulders. Keep your belly nice and strong. It doesn't matter if you lean forward two inches or flatten all the way down. Keeping that spinal integrity by keeping your low belly strong. The more that I lean forward, the more I'm gonna to start to feel stretch, particularly in whatever the top shin is. So that's the difference between double pigeon, doubling up both shins stacked, as opposed to the half pigeon, just one shin working towards parallel. So those are a couple of options on your pigeon pose. And you're gonna see those mostly in our power flow classes. We'll take a tiny bit of a shift and we'll work into the dragons and lizards that you would traditionally see in our slow flow classes. So what those look like, similar to working into a crescent lunge, the only difference is your hands are gonna go inside your front foot and you're gonna keep your front knee close in towards your shoulder. So whatever your front knee is, close in towards your shoulder. This is lizard pose. Back knee down, this is also lizard pose. If we're working into this for a strengthening pose, likely we're gonna keep back leg up. If we're working on more of a stretching releases, releasing, typically we're gonna go back knee down. You can keep your toes tucked to help support your knee. You can also untuck your toes, keep sliding your back knee back for a deeper stretch. So this is lizard. 
And then the biggest difference between lizard and dragon is what's happening in your front foot. So you're gonna, for dragon pose, wiggle your foot out, and you're gonna turn your toes out to about 10 o'clock on the left side. Right side will be two o'clock-ish. But now, instead of keeping your knee in towards your front shoulder, now you're moving your knee away from your body. So this is biggest difference between dragon and lizard. Variations here, you can stay up, you can grab a block or two, and you can rest on your forearms, and if you need a deeper stretch, you can start to come all the way down to your forearms. Lizard and dragon, in a nutshell, dragon knee wide, lizard foot and knee nice and close, back knee up or down. And those are, again, poses you'll traditionally see in a slow flow class. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this content was helpful in growing your yoga practice. Anytime you have questions, please ask. Grab a teacher, grab an assistant in the studio, we're more than happy to help. Thanks so much.